Hey everyone, welcome to our mini lecture number four from our anxiety and impulsivity unit. Today we're talking about GABA. So uh, I'm not going to bother redefining what GABA is. We all we all know what GABA is from our previous discussions. Uh, GABA induced inhibition controls the excitability of local circuits. Right, this is one of the things that it does. GABAergic interneurons are very very common. In particular, this type of signaling regulates activation of the central nucleus of the amygdala which we talked about previously being important for the uh, affectation of uh, fear and anxiety-like responses. So glutamatergic neurons from the prefrontal cortex stimulate GABAergic neurons within the amygdala. So we have projections coming from the prefrontal cortex, reaching down into the amygdala and activating GABAergic interneurons, right? Which sort of serve as a local control mechanism for uh, top-down control. So top-down control coming from the cortex through these um, glutamatergic projections can stimulate GABAergic interneurons, which can provide inhibition and control of uh, amygdaloid activity. Impaired GABAergic function could lead to this an overactivity of the bottom-up signal. So remember we talked about earlier how there's a sort of balance between the subcortical structures, the emotion-generating structures, and the cortical top-down influence, the emotion regulation. So impaired GABAergic signaling, which is really, really important for uh, this top-down element, could throw this balance out of whack, which could mean it could hinder the top-down control that's exerted normally by the prefrontal cortex and result in a failure uh, to control the emotional impact of a given event. So hyperreactivity to stress or fearful stimuli is a result of this circuit being dysregulated, right? And the key factor we're talking about here is if this GABA function is impacted, the GABA is the main, the GABA neurons are the main mechanism by which the prefrontal cortex is able to exert control over the amygdala. So with those um, being dysregulated, we have dysregulated emotional processing. So um, we should mention here briefly uh, benzos, which we'll abbreviate as BDZ. Uh, benzos and barbiturates cause sedation and anxiety reduction by modulation of the GABA receptor complex. So these are widely distributed throughout the brain. Uh, benzodiazepine sites are widely distributed uh, throughout the brain, so receptors that contain those sites are located all over the place. But we see high concentrations in the amygdala, limbic system, and cerebral cortex, and those are some regions that are really important for regulating uh, fear and anxiety. So it might see uh, pretty intuitive that benzos are a good class of drug to deal with this. And we'll talk about exactly how these drugs interact in more detail later on. So let's talk about exactly what's going on here. Benzo class drugs are positive allosteric modulators of chloride containing GABA receptors, right? So if we go back and look here, the benzo binding site is right here in this little diagram. Um, and so that means it's not the principal binding site, right? It's a non-competitive agonist. So GABA binds over here. What happens is if GABA binds in the presence of a benzo class drug, it's going to have enhanced chloride conductance, right? So more chloride is going to move through this channel uh, and hyperpolarize that neuron. So if you remember back to our discussion of uh, GABA and chloride channels, Chloride is a negatively charged ion, so when chloride passes into the cell, it hyperpolarizes it, uh, inhibits it, makes it less likely to fire. And what uh, benzo class drugs do is they make these GABA receptors a bit more efficient, right? They allow more chloride to pass through the channel when GABA binds and does its thing. So let's look at various classes of drugs and how they impact the uh, chloride flux. So we've got inverse agonists, which do what they sound like. They actually move the chloride flux in a negative direction. The competitive antagonist that we show here does what you would expect, which is to say not much, right? If if it's a competing for a uh, allosteric binding site, it's not going to activate the receptor, right? It's not going to activate uh, the ion channel and allow chloride in one way or the other, so it's not doing much of anything. And here we have our benzo class agonists, which are going to bind that allosteric binding site and enhance the conductance of that chloride channel. So when um, this, uh, these benzo class drugs are present, and then uh, we have GABA stimulated chloride flux. We're going to see more chloride moving through the channel. Basically, what we're trying to say here is action at this site influences how much chloride moves through. And if we have these benzo class drugs bound to the uh, benzodiazepine site, when GABA comes along and binds, it's going to increase the amount of chloride that moves through. Because these are allosteric modulators, they don't do anything in the absence of GABA. Right? There needs to be both 
GABA present over here, and there needs to be uh, there has to be GABA present here for anything to happen at all. And if GABA is present and a benzo is present, then we're going to have increased chloride flux. That's all we're trying to say. So these types of drugs can produce reduction in anxiety. So administering uh, GABA agonist into the amygdala can reduce anxiety. And this is reversed by uh, using a benzodiazepine binding site antagonist, which we mentioned on the previous slide, or by co-administration of a GABA antagonist like mycocholine, which is going to compete for that principal binding site. So basically what we're showing with that little bit of information is that, of course, uh, the benzodiazepine needs access to the allosteric binding site to do its thing but it also won't do anything on its own, right? If we block uh, GABA from binding to its site with bicocaline, um, all of the benzo class drugs in the world aren't going to do anything because they only enhance GABA signaling, they don't substitute for it. Um, so some anxiety disorders are marked by decreased uh, binding availability for the benzodiazepam site, and reduced availability of the site may result in uh, failure of GABA inhibition, leading to uncontrolled panic attacks, phobias, generalized anxiety, and hyperarousal state that's present in um, PTSD. So here we have a PET scan that shows um, a healthy individual on the left and a patient with panic disorder on the right, and the warmer colors are associated with a denser expression of uh, benzodiazepine binding um, affinity. So you can see here that the healthy control has uh, much more uh, receptor sites available for benzodiazepine to bind uh, compared to the patient with a panic disorder. Okay, so that is it for our discussion of GABA as it relates to uh, anxiety. We'll see you next time.